Hello, my name is Simon Eyes and welcome to another Simon Eyes Guide video. Today I've got the Rogue Phase 3 Season of Discovery PvE Guide for you. We'll cover the best talent and rune builds, consumables, and ability rotations you should be using in raid to deal the most damage possible. Let's get right to it starting off with the talents. We have a nice assassination build taking relentless strikes, full ranks of improved poisons and vile poisons, cold blood to be used with a juicy 5 combo point in venom, and finishing the tree with just a few points in seal fate. 8 points in combat to pick up improved backstab which will increase the critical strike chance of mutilate by 30%. This talent only says backstab but remember Anything that affects backstab also affects mutilate. Finally, the build is finished off with a stellar talent in the first row of the subtlety tree, opportunity for a simple plus 20% damage to mutilate. Despite how this talent is worded, it will provide a damage benefit to mutilate regardless if you are attacking from behind, the side, or in front of the enemy. It's just bad wording on the tooltip. We'll be using combat potency, deadly brew, cut to the chase, mutilate, shadow step, and venom, and master a subtlety for our runes. This build is how I recommend to set up your talent and runes. The only real requirement on this setup is to ensure you have a fast offhand dagger, either 1.3 or 1.4 speed to get a lot of value from your combat potency helm rune. This is super important because faster attacks means more energy from combat potency. The setup is simple and it's hard to screw up, which is why I recommend it, but there are many other viable rune setups, so let's talk about them. All combinations of the two good wrist runes and all three of the head runes are within about 3% DPS of each other according to our DPS estimation tools most within just 1-2%, to 2%. so you really can pick what you like the best and pump some damage. Let's talk first about the other good wrist rune, Carnage. If you swap to Carnage wrist rune, you want to change your talents and take 3 points out of lethality and move them into improved slice and dice. The wrist rune is the only rune change that comes along with a talent swap, so you don't need to worry about changing your talents for different helm runes. The Carnage wrist rune offers a more complicated rotation than Cut to the Chase. You'll need to juggle Slice and Dice, Rupture, and Envenom all at once, but more on that later in the rotation section of the video. We're talking about runes now, and let's talk about the three head rune options. All three of them are good, but they're good in different situations with different conditions. Combat Potency is my main recommendation because it's the most consistently good rune. The only thing you need to make Combat Potency pop off is a fast offhand weapon, 1.3 or 1.4 speed. Honor Among Thieves will give you loads of combo points, but the power of this rune is entirely dependent on your group. Some classes will give way more combo points than others, and some players will give more than others due to gear or skill differences. If anyone in your group dies, they won't be be giving you any more combo points, so just pray everyone stays alive. The final Helm Room, Focus Attacks, was recently buffed from 2 energy per critical strike up to what it is now, 3 energy per critical strike. This is enough to make it worth using if your critical strike chance is pretty high. Around 35% or more is where you want to start considering using focused attacks. This will require world buffs, consumables, enchants, and party buffs like Heart of the Lion or Grace of Air to get your critical strike chance high enough. If you die and lose world buffs, you should probably swap this rune back to either Combat Potency or Honor Among Thieves. Speaking of consumables, there are really a lot of consumables you can buy in Phase 3 that boost up your character's power, and some much more than others. I made this handy chart that shows the estimated DPS loss on about a 2 minute fight to remove each of these consumables, starting from a full consumable, full world buff setup. A few consumables have some cheaper alternatives that do not stack, like you can use either Mongoose or Greater Agility but not both. Mongoose is better and it's about a 52 DPS loss to simply not use it, but if you instead downgrade from Mongoose to Elixir of Greater Agility, it's only about a 22 DPS loss. If you want to use both Grilled Squid food buff and Dragon Breath Chili at the same time, you need to eat the squid first and then the chili second. If you eat a squid while you already have a chili buff, it will remove the chili buff. Don't ask why, I don't know, it's just the way it is in Classic WoW. Elixir of Coalesced Regret makes it onto this list because despite the item not saying it does this, it actually gives plus one to all your stats, so it works out to a meager DPS increase. For your temporary weapon enhancements, you won't be using any poisons on your weapon. The Deadly Brew Rune gives you both instant and deadly poison for free, so long as you don't apply any poison to your weapon from your inventory. Deadly Brew Rune will apply the highest rank of instant poison and deadly poison that your character knows, 
so you still have to go to the trainer and learn the higher ranks. Because of the Deadly Brew rune, we can use any non-poison weapon enhancement and still benefit from poisons. If you have either a Shaman or Druid to provide you Wind Fury or Wild Strikes, that will take up the temporary weapon enhancement on your main hand weapon. Do not apply any Sharpening Stones to your main hand or else you won't be able to benefit from Wind Fury or Wild Strikes. Without a Shaman or Druid in your party, you should actually apply a Dense Sharpening Stone to your main hand and all the time you should be applying a Dense Sharpening Stone to your offhand weapon. Now on to the best section, the Rotations. What abilities you should be pressing in your raid to deal the most damage? The rotation will differ for using Cut to the Chase Wrist Rune or Carnage Wrist Rune like I mentioned before, and since I generally recommend Cut to the Chase, let's start with that one. For your opener, you want to start in stealth, but immediately exit stealth and run to the boss to start attacking as fast as possible. Attacking as early as possible is a really big deal. Moving slowly towards the boss in stealth and losing precious attack time is not worth using any stealth openers. But being in stealth to begin with will activate your Master of Subtlety rune buff, so that is good. If you are an Orc with Blood Fury, an Alchemist with the Mildly Irradiated Potions, or perhaps you have Roar the Guardian Trinket, you've got access to some temporary attack power bonuses. You want to use these the very instant you start attacking, ideally actually a moment before. This is because when you apply the first five initial stacks of Deadly Poison, that is when the game checks your attack power value to decide how much damage the Deadly Poison will deal. If you apply those initial stacks while having a temporary attack power bonus like Blood Fury, Mildly Irradiated Rejuvenation, Nation Potion or Roar of the Guardian active, then that increased damage per tick for Deadly Poison will continue for as long as that stack of poison remains on the boss, which is usually the entire fight. This is what players refer to when they say that Deadly Poison will snapshot these temporary bonuses. Okay, so you got to the boss quickly, you popped all your temporary attack power bonuses, you should start out with a Mutilate into a quick Slice and Dice. The number of combo points on this Slice and Dice is irrelevant, just get it activated right away. And now this is the beauty of the cut to the chase room. The whole rest of the rotation is simply building up to four or five combo points with Mutilate, then slamming in Venom. In Venom automatically refreshes Slice and Dice back up to full duration and you do it again. If you get up to four or five combo points and still have an Envenom buff active from the previous cast, it's okay to wait a little bit for it to fade before casting the next Envenom, as long as you don't let your energy reach maximum. Try to use your Thistle Tea when your energy is very low. Since it fills up your entire bar no matter when you use it, you'll get more total energy if you use it when you're at like 10 energy rather than if you use it when you're at 40 energy. Your Cold Blood should be used the first time you deal a five combo point in Venom. That's your biggest, hardest hitting ability and the best place to use Cold Blood. Now for the Carnage Rune rotation, it's almost completely different. You won't get any free refreshes of Slice and Dice, so you need to cast and refresh that manually. To activate the Carnage Rune bonus, you'll need to apply either Garrote or Rupture to your target. Bleeds triggered from items like Barman Shanker will not activate Carnage. With both of those handled, you can spend any excess combo points on Envenom finishing moves. With Carnage, it can be really nice to open with a Garrote on a boss to immediately activate Carnage but sometimes it can be tricky to be able to position for that without losing too much attacking time. If your raid uses a pull timer, you can shadow step to the boss while in stealth the instant the pull timer hits zero and then gear out one second later and that should be good. The same rules apply for temporary attack power bonuses just like with the cut to the chase rotation. Use them the very instant or the moment before you start attacking. If you skip the cut to the chase rotation and want the full explanation on why, click back to that section of the video, it will be timestamped. So a typical opener might look like Shadow Step into Garo, then Mutilate, Slice and Dice, Mutilate, then either another Mutilate if you're only at two or three points, or an Envenom if you're already up to four or five points. If you did not open with a Garo, then replace the first Envenom with a Rupture, so you have a Bleed active on the target. For the sustained rotation, both Slice and Dice and a Bleed debuff from either Rupture or Garo are roughly equal in priority to maintain, and both are much more important than your third priority, Envenom. Ideally, all finishing moves are going to be used on either four or five combo points, but if you find yourself with only three points and either Rupture or Slice and Dice is missing, it's usually better to cast it on three rather than Mutilate, wait for energy, then do it on four or five a few seconds later. You'll need to continually assess the remaining duration of Rupture, Slice and Dice, and your current energy and combo points to decide if you can get an Envenom in before needing to build up for the next refresh of Rupture or Slice and Dice. It will take some planning ahead and care
careful attention, and this is why the Carnage rotation is much more prone to DPS loss due to player error compared to using the Cut to the Chase rune. Some players enjoy this complexity, and if you do it right, you can deal great DPS and see some of the biggest crit damage numbers possible on a rogue this phase, which is always super fun. You can also use Vanish and apply a Garo mid fight, which is a really nice way to maintain the Carnage debuff and should afford you an extra in Venom in place of a Rupture for more damage. If you're gonna do this, make sure you have the required 50 energy for the Garo before you press Vanish. You do not wanna sit in stealth, not attacking, waiting for that energy regeneration. That would be very bad. Just like with Cut to the Chase, your Cold Blood should be used on the first five combo point in Venom you find yourself doing during the fight and your Thistle Tea should be used when your energy bar is very low. And that's a wrap, that's it. That should cover what you need to know to pump big damage in your raid. If you're interested in what the best gear available is or some easy to get alternatives, check out the gearing guide video linked in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having fun in Season of Discovery. I know I am, and I hope you have a great day.